Welcome to this United meeting. I don't know where you are connecting from, but you are welcome to this place, to this connection. And uh, yesterday we had an awesome meeting with Ed Silvoso and his wife Ruth and my wife Kathleen. And if you want to watch that, you can right here on this Facebook later on, you can watch parts of that meeting. But today I'm bringing a word in regard to how to have big faith. Because one of the problems we have with this pandemia is that for many, they are shrinking. They are sinking. It seems like they are getting weaker. Some people are getting saturated. So here is an injection of the Word of God for the people of God. But before then, let us know how are you doing? Where are you connecting from? Welcome from any place on earth that you might be connected. I see some people greeting and putting hearts and likes. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. It's good to be in fellowship with you and working together to saturate the world with the message of the gospel. So welcome everyone. Now, if you want to invite someone <clears throat> to this a teaching, sharing, brief teaching of the Word of God, you can do that right now. Send them the link, send them an invitation, especially for pastors, leaders, servants that might be struggling, might be going through discouragement. And I will tell you a few stories about it as time permits. But Let's pray together and let's go right into the Word of God. Father, thank you for this gathering from many nations. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that connects us and unites us all. We are one church, one Lord, one baptism, one faith. So now strengthen your people, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said a strong amen. Some of you that might not participate yet, just put an amen there or an okay. Excellent. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You may recall this story in Matthew 14 about Jesus appearing to the disciples in the midst of a storm, walking on water while they were on the boat. Remember that? Matthew 14, you can review it. And then so happened that the boldest of the disciples, he said, Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you walking on the waters, tell me to come to you walking on the water too. Now, I want to men- I'm going to mention three things, three normal things that people should not look at anymore. Servants of God, pastors, leaders, leaders of prayer groups, uh, any believer, any true Christian, there are three normal, natural things. They are not sinful in themselves, but you shouldn't look at it anymore because they are distracting you and they are debilitating your faith. And so Peter, with great faith, really great boldness, he said, If it's you, I know I can walk like you on water. And Jesus said, yes, come. I bet Jesus was very happy to see the faith of his disciple. So Peter went over the side, and verse uh, 29 says, over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Now, if for any reason we get disconnected or you have to do something else, Let me give you the key to this whole teaching in one phrase. Walk on water towards Jesus. That is the key to have gigantic faith. One step at a time. Don't expect the floor to contain you, to hold you. Basically, it's your faith that is going to hold you. And you keep persevering one step at a time, always in the same direction, in the direction of Jesus. So I'm going to say to pastors, and the Lord gave me a word for pastors today. The Lord tells you, pastor, you are going to be healed. Your ministry is going to be healed as you minister. As you walk towards Jesus, as you exercise your faith, it's no. It, it, look, my dad, he was so sick; he had perforated lungs, and the doctor said to my mom, "He only has a few months of life," and he was twenty something, and I was a two month year old, two month old baby, and the Lord told my dad to preach in a in a conference, in, a, in an evangelistic crusade, 
uh, like a little street meeting. And he did it. And after the last meeting, he was healed. He was not healed while resting, while visiting the doctor, which was he needed to do that anyway, while taking any medicine. He was healed as he was ministered. And the Lord gave me a specific rhema word for pastors that are in terrible struggle, struggle of faith, struggle of finances. Uh, some of them had lost their property that they were renting because they couldn't pay through the coronavirus crisis. And the Lord says to you, I will heal you as you continue to minister to others. Amen and amen. So, uh, Peter started well. He said he walked on water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waters and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. So here are the three things you and I should not look at, even though they are natural things. They are not evil. It's not pornography in this case. It's not uh, stealing or lying or cheating. But these natural things can also debilitate your faith. And these natural things are first the boat. Uh, well, for what we know, Peter was so intense when he started that he was not looking back backwards. Probably the gospel would have registered that. But basically he kept walking. See, many leaders and many ministers are looking back. And they are saying, oh, how I wish I will have my place again of worship. And many people are looking back into broken relationships, into broken economies, into something that at this point you cannot fix is behind you. Might have been okay. It's, it's not evil to look at a boat. But the problem is it can distract you from your goal. First of all, one thing, natural thing that you shouldn't look at anymore once you walk by faith is to the past. Secondly, don't look to the wind and the waves. Uh, now, how can you look at the wind? The wind is basically invisible, but you feel the wind. You look at the effects of the wind. And uh, yesterday, as we were praying, day before yesterday in our prayer group, and it made me cry. One of our pastoras said, it began to pray for uh, pastors that minister in farming regions, in the fields, or uh, in areas that are not the city. And she was praying and saying, Lord, they don't even have internet to gather their people. And they lost, the, it seemed like they lost their congregation. And she was praying and it inspired me to keep praying for those pastors that are struggling and leaders that are struggling. But how are you, intercessor, brother, sister, how are you doing? Are you looking back to the boat, to the safety place? Or are you looking to the strong winds that are, that are right now with us? It's not only the virus, friends. Some prophets are saying that something even harder is coming. I'm, I don't know. I'm not a prophet. But I tend to feel that some more challenges are coming. Maybe it's broken economies at a national level. May the Lord help us. And if you keep looking just at the wind, you might terrify and your faith will become debilitated. So three natural things you shouldn't look at anymore. The boat, the wind and the waves, but thirdly, the floor. It says he was terrified and began to sink. Even when he began to sink, he could have said, my faith brought me here. And I was floating, I was walking on water, I'm going to refloat. But no, he began to sink and apparently he looked down and he said, okay, this is beyond remedy. Remedy, I'm destroyed, I'm done. And so he basically says, save me, Lord. And notice the Lord saved him. The Lord will rescue you, even if you have little faith. But he said to him, you have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? Now, please understand this is the man that a minute ago was walking on waters towards Jesus. And now Jesus said, you have so little faith. I would have thought that Jesus would say, you know, uh, you, didn't, you didn't last too long, but actually you have pretty strong faith to even... No, no, no. Because uh, 
Strong faith is long-term faith. Strong faith is when you go the, all the way in the will of God. And some of you that are wavering right now, you're getting weaker. You're getting distracted. Three things you should not look at anymore. The boat, the wind and the waves, and then the ground. Because that's your reality without faith. And you know, ministries cannot be multiplied with reality only. You cannot feed 5,000 people with a few loaves of bread and a few fish. You can't. You need to go not against reality. You, you need to go beyond reality and become a miraculous person. Have such a faith that realities today will change. So I urge you so that we don't hear that from the Lord. Imagine, I, I can think of leaders, servants, mothers, fathers that have been trusting the Lord for the salvation of all their family. And suddenly they began to sink and the Lord says, you have little faith. Lord, I've been praying 10, ten years for this. Yes, but you gave up. Don't give up until you reach Jesus, until you reach your miracle. So let's pray together right now. Father, we pray that you will, Lord, deliver us from distraction. Some people right now are looking back. Some others are looking to the floor, to the ground. And they see that their reality is unsustainable. Because of their finances, their economy, their health, their problems, their family divisions. Oh God, some others are looking at the winds and at the virus and at the financial problems of nations. Oh Lord, may we refocus on you. May we have not only strong faith for a moment. Give us real faith, oh Lord. Long-term faith and Till we see you embracing us and congratulating us because of our strong faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God says, Amen and Amen and Amen. Brother, sister, friend, four quick invitations. Come and pray with us. If you go to communionet.com or go to mentorsergio.com and that will take you to our prayer network. We need 140 new prayer leaders. Come and help us. Come and pray with us. Then read the scripture with us every day. And we have a program that we want to offer to you. And then give. If, if you are a generous person, give. This network needs your offerings to continue. And then finally train others. Come and be trained to train others. You will be a disciple maker. So come, join us. This is an adventure. Right now we have 371 prayer meetings every day. But we are going for 1 million in 10 years. Okay? So come and help us. And many of you, some of you that were considering, oh, I'm sinking. Oh, I'm not doing well. Come on, by faith, focus on Jesus. And let's keep doing ministry. And let's keep serving this broken humanity until we see millions of people coming to Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Keep strong. Have a blessed Sunday. And in some nations in the world today, it's Mother's Day. So to those nations and to any mother that is listening to us, happy Mother's Day. God bless you greatly. <music>